it's Carrie from Lovely Etc. And today I'm really excited to show you how to turn boring sliding closet doors into gorgeous stores that fully open so you can finally see everything in your closet at the same time. These are the closet doors that I am working with. And if you have ever had sliding closet doors like these, you know why I hate them so much. You can never see all your stuff at the same time. You can see this half of your closet, or you can see this half of your closet. Never the two <laughs> together. And the stuff that's in the very middle is a pain to access. I'm done with the sliding doors and I'm gonna fix my problem. So my plan is to reuse these doors, which are actually nice solid doors. I just hate how they work. And turn them into French doors that open out like this. I also am ready to give these doors a bit of a makeover because while they are not the ugliest closet doors I've ever seen, for sure, they also are not particularly attractive. So I'm gonna take these boring sliding doors and turn them into something way more functional and way more stylish on a tight budget, reusing the doors that we already have. The first step to transforming sliding closet doors is getting rid of all of the sliding door hardware. So remove the sliding door track from your closet frame and the sliders from your closet door. Most of the time, removing the sliding door track from your door frame just involves unscrewing a few things. It's not a big deal, but sometimes it's a little more involved. For my own house, the sliding door track was fully integrated into the closet door frame. So I had to pull off some of the trim to be able to remove it, and it was not quite as easy as I would have liked, but I got it done. And once the sliding door frame was off, I simply replaced it with a 1x4 board to make the top of my door frame. The next step involves cutting your doors down to size. I'm reusing the same sliding doors that I already had, but because originally they were sized to overlap when they closed just a little bit, they're gonna be too big to open out like a French door. So you need to cut just a little bit off of the edge of each door using a circular saw. I have a little bit more information about figuring out how much to cut off at my website, lovelyetcetera.com, and I will link that down in the video description. I want this project to be as easy as possible, so I am using non-mortise hinges to hang my closet doors to save myself a whole bunch of work. With traditional hinges, you have to chisel out a little bit of the wood from your door and your door jam everywhere you put a hinge, and I'd really rather not do that. So I'm gonna be using these hinges, which fit together into one little slim package so that you don't have to do the chiseling. Just be sure that your door isn't too heavy for these. They can actually hold a surprising amount. If you're putting three hinges on each door, you'll probably be okay, but be sure to check the weight limits. So to hang these, you need to measure where they're gonna go. And I just measured some of the other doors that were already in my house to figure out where the hinges work best. Mark your measurement on the door and screw the small part of the hinge directly to the side of the door. Okay, now I have attached my hinges to the actual door. I'm gonna attach them to the door frame. And because I'm doing this by myself, I have put a piece of wood under the door to hold it up to the height that I need because you always want some clearance under the door so it can swing back and forth. Both doors are hung and now it is time to do something about this ugliness. So of course you can always just paint your doors to make them look a little nicer, but I wanna do something a little different. So I'm gonna do a herringbone wood plank design on my doors. I wanted to keep my wood really lightweight so that it wouldn't add a lot of extra weight to the door, so I am using thin quarter inch thick wood. There are a couple of different ways you can go about this. You can buy thin wood that is already cut into planks, and that's what I'm using here. I'm using these thin long lattice pieces um, I'm actually reusing some wood from a previous project. Or if you want to save more money, you can buy a big four by eight sheet of underlayment, which is a really thin, not super high grade plywood and cut it into strips yourself. Buying strips already cut is way easier. Cutting it yourself is way cheaper. So it just depends on what you wanna do. I'm gonna get started putting the frame on the second door and then I'll start laying the herringbone pattern. I'm using both wood glue and a nail gun to attach my wood to the door because it's a door and it's gonna be opening and closing. I wanna make sure it's really secure. Okay, both doors have been framed all around and now I am ready to fill in with the herringbone. The first step is to draw a straight line down the center of your door to use as a guide. Use a miter saw to cut 45 degree angle cuts at one end of each of your wood planks. Then you can hold each wood plank in place with the angled end against the line you drew down the middle of the door and measure where the second end needs to be cut for a perfect fit. 
It's really important to get the first row of wood planks lined up exactly. Use a speed square so you can make sure that the angles are right. Once your first row is in place, just keep moving down the door, adding wood planks as you go. When you get to the very top and very bottom of the door, there's going to be a few odd triangles and parallelogram shapes to cut, but it should be easy with a miter saw. If you don't have a nail gun, you can definitely still do this project using a hammer and nails, but it is going to take a lot more time. And here are my closet doors, all planked and ready for paint. I painted my doors in the color Watery by Sherwin-Williams. Just use a good angle brush to cut in around the edges and then fill in with a foam roller for smooth surfaces. Once the paint was dry, I used a utility knife to remove any excess paint that was between the planks just to keep the pattern looking nice and crisp. I installed a small piece of wood along the top of the door frame to act as a stop bar to keep the doors from closing inward when they're closed. And I also installed these two magnetic catches. A lot of times people use something called a ball catch for doors like this to keep the door closed and in place, but I read a tip online that a magnetic catch is actually much easier to install and also works better. So that's what I went with. Each of these magnetic catches was only about $1 and they work great. There is a little piece of metal on the back of the door and when you close it, the magnet holds it in place so that the door doesn't drift back open on its own. And then here you can also see how the little piece of wood at the top of the closet keeps the doors in place as well. And here are my finished closet doors now. They look amazing. No more blah, flat, boring closet doors for me. And more importantly, they work so much better now. It is so much easier to just come to the closet and see everything inside. My husband and I can both get our clothes out at the same time, which is amazing. Now, of course, the inside of the closet, still a mess. This is my next project. This is the next video I'll be making. Making some DIY custom shelving to get this tiny master closet organized and reaching its full potential. If you want more specific information about this project with measurements and details like that, you can head to my website, lovelyetcetera.com, where I have a full tutorial, and I will link that in the video description. And if you are not already a subscriber, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel, Lovely Etc., where I share lots of inexpensive DIY ideas for creating a home that you love.